Hello sharpeners and wannabe sharpeners and those are just interested in the whole thing. Um, this is going to be a video today. I think I, it's going to be entitled, if I give it a title, it's less is more. I'm going to be looking at the sharpening done on these from shears by someone I trained and he sharpened them with Simek Jr. and he ran into some problems and I think the issue was he overdid it. Here's his letter. So I'm going to read his letter. If you need translating, it's Southern Georgia talk. He says, Bonnie, I moved angle to 35 as you said try. Seemed to have been a little help, but still not good. I honed with Emory and they worsened. They have whomped me, even after prayer. Seeing what you can do, I'll call to pay bill and see what you found out. I want to know, question mark, question mark. <laughs> well, this is going to be fun. Not that he didn't sharpen him enough, but that he just kept right on going. And part of that is, you know, just being new, understanding shears. So let's talk about this. Now, if you come to training with me, there's a few catchphrases that you'll learn or if you watched enough of my videos. And one of them is less is more, which is what we'll talk about today. Um, I'll talk about um, square peg, round hole, nipples up, um, B flat, um, C for convex and cushion. And if you don't know what all those little catch stupid phrases are, you watch some more of my videos. <laughs> but less is more. When is less more? Well, this is a perfect example. So let's take a look at these shears. What am I seeing? First of all, they are way too loose. It may be just tightening them is all that it's going to need. And the reason they're too loose, I feel certain, is the person that sharpened them took them apart and tried to do a rod line. Now, I want you to notice how flat this is in there. Any time you get shears that are beveled, that have almost no hollow to them, don't do the ride line, which means you don't have to take them apart, which means you don't run into a problem with the screw not holding. So you've got your, your first step in sharpening is to evaluate the shears. What are they? Now this is one of those two-piece shears, and any time you get something with the handle and the blade or two pieces, the first thing you do is wiggle it good and see if those rivets are tight. And they, they are tight. I'm not wiggling this way, I'm wiggling it from the blade to the handle. So they are tight. We definitely have a loose problem. Let's see if I can tighten it. See, these are little wonky screws. Um, I, I just don't take these apart. Oh yeah, look how that screw just turned so easy. Yeah, I may have to take these apart and figure out why that screw's not holding. So now it's tight. Let's see how it cuts hair. No. Nope. Even with it tight, it's just flipping. It cuts back here, but when it gets to the edge, it doesn't. So why is that? Number one, do you see this little ride line that he's tried to put on here? You see that ride line he's put on there? That's not supposed to have a ride line at all. This is a similar shear, and it should look like this on the inside. See? No ride line. Even if it does have a teeny tiny ride line, you, you wouldn't want to put it on your stone to try to put one in there because it's too flat and it's just going to make this really wide ride go all the way across and that's going to slip on the hair. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put an edge on it and see what happens. Um, I, it may not be able to be fixed. 
Uh, it might have a little bit of an alignment issue too. And I asked if he cut with them first before he tried to sharpen them and I don't think he did. So you always want to do a comparison. I'm going to quickly sharpen these because like I told you less is more. I'm not going to use my um, Cymec HD because I know this sharpener has the Cymec Junior. So this is what we're going to use. Um, <laughs> you can tell I use both machines and it's a right-handed shear so I'm going to slide this down to the right and Let's color in the edge. I want to see what angle he's got on there now. Oh, that air compressor scares the dickens out of me. Let me turn it off. Did you jump? Yes. I think I'll leave it on the video too. <laughs> it seems like every time I shoot a video, that air compressor goes off. I use that for clipper blades. I really probably ought to just leave it off all the time and just turn it on when I'm doing clipper blades. What you think? Then it would take forever to get all the well, yeah, then it'll it'd make that long noise for a long time. Yep. So <laughs> let's go back to what I was doing. <laughs> I'm looking at his angles. His angles don't look too bad. Well, on the one blade it doesn't. This one looks kind of off. Let me see if you can see this one. It looks like he might not have gotten to the edge. Or he changed the angles a few times. You see those angles? Um, this is a lesson if you do the ISSA certification for the bevel edge because you just want to keep it simple. Keep it simple. It's almost better to do too little. I, I would say it is better to do too little than to too much because if you do too little, at least I should be able to fix it if you can't. But if you do too much, it's gone. This is a little clip of some scissors yesterday that my husband had to help me fix because the last sharpener had messed him up so much we had to take a whole um, inch off the edge off the end of the shear because it didn't cut and was unable to make it cut. That's pretty radical. <laughs> I say I can usually make most, most shears work, but I can't promise you I can make them work all the way down to the tip. So this is set at 45. I'm going to do 45. I think he said he sharpened them at 45 to begin with. I'm thinking the correct angle for these shears would be 35. But I'm just laying this on here and seeing what the angle is. Yeah, he's gone blunter than 45. And what I'm doing right now is I'm moving a light over here. If you've got one of these um, Cymec Juniors, you can use this light that I use on our HD. You just have to have a little sticky metal part um, so the magnet will fit. 35 is where it should be. Now, do you notice what grit I'm using here? This is a worn 100 micron. You could use a fresh maybe 400 or 600. You want to use something pretty aggressive um, because you need to have a little bite in it. A lot of times these shears, one blade will be serrated. I don't remember whether this one was or not originally. Um, I don't really get many of these to sharpen because they're such cheap scissors. Usually people won't pay to get them sharpened. They'll just throw them away and get another one. So now I'm going to go ahead and just turn this on and I'm going 
oh, the wrong angle, wrong direction. I may, need to make sure I'm going the correct way, see? And it'll say right and left on the Cymec Juniors. The, the original ones say forward and reverse, so you want to go forward if you're doing a right-handed shear. If you've got one of the newer Cymec Juniors, it'll say right and left, so you go right if it's a uh, right-handed shear. And it is turning right. So you, you want to be going away from the edge, not into the edge. And I'm going at 30%. I'm not going real fast. And you can put a little water on here. Now I'm sitting down doing this. I really would recommend that you stand up because with this machine, it's blowing dust right into my face. And coming up, sometimes you can see as you pull it out, you can look down here, especially if you've got black underneath it like I do you can see the burrs that pops out as you come out. And I don't bring it all the way out because it's too easy to mess up that tip. And I can do a little rocking back and forth if I'm not sure if I've got that tip. So I've got a burr all the way down pretty quick. Let's flip it over. And I'm hoping this very, very simple sharpening, I didn't mean to close them, hoping this very, very simple sharpening will, will fix it. Do I sharpen all scissors like this? No, no, just these cheap ones. Do I charge as much for these cheap ones as the expensive ones? Uh, yes and no. If it's a customer, like I went to see a few weeks ago, who had a whole bunch of scissors, and she knew her cheap one she only used for, well, she made two pays for cutting the, the plastic on the two pays. I didn't charge her as much for those because they're not as much work. And she's not expecting the same degree of sharpness. But if it's a hairstylist and she's expecting these things to, to, um, <laughs> She's expecting these to be her main workhorse. Uh, yeah, um, because you could run into problems like this. Might not be a simple sharpening. So hopefully, and sometimes it's, I don't pray over every shear I sharpened. Um, sometimes when you get something crazy like this, the last sharpener's messed up. Sometimes it's good to pray. <laughs> I'm going to cut, and I'm using actual pressure to cut. No such luck. No such luck. They definitely look like they're out of alignment. If you close them, I'm going to put them right here where you can see. Zoom in. Not putting them on an alignment bar, but if you're closing them and you're looking straight down at them, it just looks like these blades need a little bit more curve to them. Do I dare risk bending them? I think so, because he said he's going to replace them if he can't, if I can't fix them. I've got both the plastic one. We sell both of these, the plastic and the aluminum. As I've said before, I'm not crazy about any of these. The ones that they used when I was in the factory in Germany looked like this. You put it on a vise. Um, one day we'll come up with a better design or somebody else will and we'll sell it. Uh, I've tried this um, little device and we were looking at selling that, but the first ones I did broke. I may not have known how to use it correctly. I guess the bottom line is there's nothing perfect about bending these and you always run into the chance of breaking it. 
I don't put it apart, put an alignment bar to check it. I'm just going to do a little tweaking. And I'm just trying to put a little bit more bow. And I'm being very careful. I don't think I've done that much difference on it. It is feeling like it can bend though. I don't feel a really... Now I don't think these handles would bend. Let's see if that's doing anything better in cutting. <gasps> oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> oh good! <laughs> I think we're going to get these fixed. And I run the risk of breaking these when I do this. And I'm not taking them apart, putting them on alignment bar. I'm just kind of bending both blades and tweaking it. And I'm only using the big slot. And I could probably use this one as well, see. Let's see if I got the tip. Oh, they're not as good as they were. I'm going to keep working at it. I'm going to go over it once more now that I've got the alignment right. Go over it once more and cut the burr off. And possibly when he was doing the rod line, he, he got it out of a, a alignment. Now, I want you to notice how I've got it wrong in my clamp. <laughs> Let me get it better. How I have it in the clamp. It's a little bit of a slanting down. That seems to help me get the burr at the tip better. Staying at 35. I could drop it down maybe. I'm going to flip it over. I think we're going to be able to get some semblance of cutting out of these scissors. I don't know if they'll be optimized in the way that stylus or barber wanted them to be, but... Okay. I think that's going to work. So it's cutting my paper towel. Let's see how it cuts tissue and then we'll check it on hair. Now on these beveled edge cheaper scissors, don't worry if they don't cut wet. <coughs> you see what I mean about the dust? It's dust flying at me and I'm sneezing and I probably should have been standing up just now. So with the pressure, uh, it's cutting except for the very, very tippy, tippy tip. So the tip is not cut. I'm going to just shorten them a little bit. They'll never notice that little bit of shortening. They will notice if they don't cut the tip. I don't normally ask this unless I'm taking off like the guy who yesterday, this much of a shear. Um, I took a five and a half inch shear and made it a four inch shear, or four and a half, I guess. But the interesting thing was he was wanting to buy a four and a half inch shear, which she was looking at those and I guess doing all that extra work actually got me, lost me a sale. He hasn't picked them up yet, so maybe he'll buy the, the, the better four and a half inch because these don't cut. 
They won't slide cut. I mean, they'll cut, but they won't slide cut. I think this guy actually works for the movie industry, so a lot of times he has to do just little detail stuff with the scissors. Okay. Cuts all the way to the tip. They'll never miss that. That feels rough. Always, before you give them back, always feel that tip. If it feels rough, you're going to need to smooth it out some. I'm going to go to a something a lower grit. Don't worry about polishing these. These have to have some bite to them. They are what they are. If they're trying to slide cut or do fancy cuts with these, then they're not a very knowledgeable stylist. It's like trying to paint a portrait with a brush you would paint your house with. So I'm going to cut this hair, mainly watching the tip. I'm going to say those are fixed. Those are done. See, that didn't take long. I didn't try to overdo them. And <laughs> I might cut my bangs with these today. I think these will work pretty good. And um, he won't have to replace them. Um, oh, you see that screw loosened up? Yeah, I'm going to have to take them apart. Let's see what he, let's see if he did something weird on the screw. We might have to put some, some, um, something to hold the screw. Let's, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. So, this is why you don't take them apart. You're going to run into all these kind of problems. And the only reason I'm taking them apart is because there is already a problem. He possibly put them back together wrong, lost a washer, or just they're not really designed. Okay, there's a washer there. That's right. Will this square peg go in the round hole? Oh, oh. Okay, so I proved myself wrong. This one, the square peg, <laughs> doesn't go in the round hole. So he's got it put together right. Normally the square peg goes in the round hole on this one. This is one of the exceptions square peg goes into that square hole because it's the only way it'll fit. The only time I've seen the square peg go into the square hole is when that's the only way it'll go in. And I'm having trouble getting that in. So I'm going to put I could try Loctite. I could try clear nail polish. I can use my Vibratite. I'm just going to see if some clear nail polish will hold this. Just keep, keep it simple, stupid. Let it dry just a tidge. Just a tidge. Put it in here. I start to turn with my fingers. Open and close it a few times. Let's see if it's going to hold its adjustment. I think that's going to work. Cuts good, dry. Cuts hair. I'm going to say that one's fixed and that's done. Yay! So after checking them, the screw loosened up. So I'm going to go in and use my VC3. You put this on the thread. I don't like to use it because it's fairly expensive, but you put it on the thread and you've got to let it sit for 30 minutes. If you don't let it sit for 30 minutes, it won't work. But you can take the screw in and out up to five times. 
I hope you never have to take them out of these again now that you know to sharpen them without taking them apart. So I'm going to let this sit. See, it's sticky now, but when I get ready to put it together, it usually will hold really, really well. So I'm going to let this, this sit for 30 minutes. I'll come back, put them together, and I'm sure they'll be fine. Hey, if you sharpen shears, don't try to overthink some of these things. Don't overcomplicate it. Sometimes less is more. Don't um, <laughs> make a silk purse out of a cow's ear. <laughs> uh, you got to, you know, work with what you got. Don't try to overdo it. I'm not going to be able to make this thing cut like a $300 shear, $400 shear. It is what it is. I've got some other videos I think you might enjoy and that would be helpful to you. And I uh, hope to see you at our Sharpeners Jam.